Hi everyone, this video is a case study showing how I have used Flutter Web and Cloud Functions in one of my projects. As we know, Flutter and Firebase are great for bringing your mobile apps to market in record time. But the biggest obstacle with mobile is that users still need to download your product from the App Store and this can cause extra friction. Instead, by bringing your product to the web, you can lower the barrier to entry. Thanks to Flutter Web, it's becoming easier to port most, if not all, of your mobile app features to web. As far as Firebase goes, you can add authentication, Cloud Firestore, and a whole host of other useful services. Beyond that, you can use Cloud Functions to write server-side logic for your apps. This can really expand the scope of what you can do, because Cloud Functions can do things with Firebase that your app can't do, and they can tap into the entire JavaScript ecosystem using NPM packages. So in this video, I want to give you a little taste of Flutter Web and Cloud Functions, and I hope that this will inspire you to try them out and do some full stack development. So in this case study, I'll show you two things. One, how I built a backend with a public REST API using Firestore under the hood, and two, how I built an admin web dashboard that uses a mix of Cloud Function and the REST API itself. Based on this experience, I want to share some of my learnings and show you how Cloud Functions and Flutter Web fit in the bigger picture. So we will start with a high level overview and understand the requirements of my project, and then we'll see how the different parts of the system fit together. While in the upcoming videos, I will get into more practical details and share some top tips about Cloud Functions and Flutter Web. And if you are new here, please like and subscribe for more Flutter videos. Okay, so let me start by going back in time. And back in March, I launched this Flutter REST API crash course on my website, where I show how to build a coronavirus Flutter app using an external REST API. And while I had no problems creating the course along with a sample app over the last two months, there have been some issues with the underlying REST API. In a few occasions, the API has been returning server errors, and this could only be resolved by the API provider itself. And as the course creator, this is not an ideal situation, because I had no control over the third-party API, and I didn't want this to become a problem for my students. Luckily, I had been learning about Cloud Functions and Flutter Web, and I felt that I had all the required tools to roll out my own REST API, along with an admin dashboard for managing it. It took me less than a week to build the entire system, and recently I made both the public API and the admin dashboard available to students on my course. And because now I'm in full control of the backend, I'm a happy bunny. So let me show you how everything fits together. First of all, we have a mobile client, which is a Flutter app that shows statistics about the coronavirus outbreak. This Flutter app talks to a REST API on the backend. And because the API requires authentication, I've used Flutter Web to build this portal where developers can sign up to get an authorization key. And once they have done that, they can get an access token, which expires after one hour, and once they have the access token, they can make requests to the various endpoints of this API. So this web dashboard makes it convenient for developers to set everything up, and they can even use it to send requests and preview the response data from the API. So from the developer point of view, using the REST API is a matter of writing an API service class that uses the Dart HTTP package to make requests and show the response data on the screen. But how does this all work under the hood? Well, the main idea here is that there are multiple public APIs about COVID-19, and unfortunately, some of them are unreliable. So my idea is to use Firestore as an intermediate cache between the mobile client and one or more remote APIs. And in order to pull data from the remote APIs, I can use a cloud function that runs on a schedule. And when it executes, it pulls the updated data from a remote COVID-19 API and then writes it to a specific location in Firestore. And by using the REST API, the mobile app can read that data from Firestore. So here I have my Firestore database that contains a document called totals, and this stores the updated number of cases. Now, if I was building this mobile app for myself, I would probably read the data directly from Firestore and take advantage of its real-time capabilities. But as I said before, the students of my course are the ones that will build this app. And the course is all about REST APIs. Not only that, but I've built this entire system to replace another REST API. 
and I wanted my students to use this new API with minimal code changes and without having to record a whole bunch of lessons once again. To make this possible, I have written some HTTP cloud functions that take the same authorization headers as the old API and return the data that is stored in my Firestore database. Now, this has some implications and the first one is that I'm hiding the Firestore real-time database behind a REST API. And without any doubt, this has worse performance than talking with Firestore directly from the client app. In fact, cloud functions are stateless and their execution environment is often initialized from scratch. This is known as a cold start. In practice, I have observed that cloud functions can take more than 5 seconds to run on a cold start. And you can see how slow they are. So the bottom line here is that if you own both the backend and the client, you should definitely use Firestore directly and not put a REST API in front of it. Also, that if you want to build a REST API with a high performance backend, then cloud functions are not the way to go. But my project had very specific requirements and because this REST API is for educational purposes, I don't care if the performance is not good. By the way, I'm not going to cover all the cloud functions in detail here, but I made this entire entire project available on GitHub, so you're free to check it out using the link in the description below. And this includes the code for both the cloud functions and the admin dashboard. And I will share some more in-depth tutorials about cloud functions in the upcoming videos. With that said, I want to talk a bit about Flutter Web as well. As you can see, the dashboard that I built here doesn't look very appealing. And this is fine because this is an admin dashboard and my focus wasn't on building a good looking UI, but rather on creating a simple front end for my REST API. And I feel that this kind of use case is a great fit for Flutter Web because we can use it to build a front end for our Firestore database and a web app like this is a lot more usable than editing things by hand and potentially making mistakes on the production database. With that said, working on this project has given me some good insights about the current state of Flutter Web and I'll be sharing more details in a separate video. For now, I'll just say that some of the things that you take for granted when viewing a website are not supported out of the box with Flutter Web. For example, by default, you can't select, copy or paste any text that you see in a Flutter Web app. And clipboard support is not great on web. And because copying text is an important requirement in this project, I had to find some workarounds to make it work. But overall, I was able to reuse most of the code from my Flutter and Firebase starter architecture on this project with minimal changes. So I'm definitely happy about the level of code reuse between mobile and web and I've been able to build this very quickly. So building is fine, but what about deployment? Well, I have used Firebase hosting to deploy this app and overall I found it quite easy to set things up. And deploying the project is just a matter of running a few commands on the terminal using the Firebase client. And again, I'll share more details about Firebase hosting in upcoming videos. Okay, so this has been a high level overview of my recent ventures with Cloud Functions and Flutter Web. There is a lot of stuff that I'm planning to cover in the next videos, but for now I want to wrap up by talking about full stack development. You see, I have been a mobile app developer for 8 years now, and for this entire time I've never written a single line of backend code. And I didn't need to, because most companies have separate job openings for frontend and backend roles. But in retrospective, I regret not trying this before. Because now that I know about Flutter, Firebase and Cloud Functions, I feel that I can build entire products and not be limited only to the front-end side of things. And above all, I find that full-stack development is very empowering. So if you are like me and you've never written any back-end code before, my message is don't be scared. There is nothing magical about it. Yes, if you want to use Cloud Functions for Firebase, you can't write them in Dart. But this is fine because you can use TypeScript instead. And I'll admit that I spent a bit of time learning about the quirks of the language, but now I know just enough TypeScript that I can do everything I need. So if there is just one thing that I'd like you to take away from this video is that you shouldn't be afraid of trying full stack development. Doing so will make you a better developer because you will learn to reason about things from a different angle and be more conscious about what code should live on the client and what code should live on the server. And if you want to learn about cloud functions, you are in the right place because I'll be covering them in my upcoming videos. For now, you can check all the links in the description below so that you can already start learning about cloud functions and TypeScript on your own. Thank you very much for watching. If this video has helped you, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.